follow the winding roads and paths through the counties of the UK and you'll come across plenty of hedgerows marking the boundaries between different landscapes. The hedgerow is a staple habitat in the UK, with the oldest ones being created all the way back in the Bronze Age, when farmers were clearing woodlands to make room for their fields. The woody strips that they left behind became the template for our future hedges. Journey a little further into the future and see as hedges began to be planted to stop people from communally using open fields to farm on. Even further into the future, after World War II, and this trend was reversed, Hedges were removed so that our landscape could be maximised for food production in a world of rationing. Unfortunately, as we arrive in modern times, large parts of the UK have lost up to 50% of our hedgerows, with many of the remaining hedges being so badly managed that they have almost no benefit to wildlife. Work is being done to encourage hedgerow planting and protection, but any new hedgerows have far less value to wildlife than their long established counterparts. In this video we're going to explore how hedges fit into the natural UK landscape by looking at what species they're made of and also at what wildlife can be found within them. Welcome to Ferra Forest. If you're interested in British nature, then make sure to subscribe to this channel. Walking past a hedgerow, you might believe it's just a clump of plants left at the side of a field, but this couldn't be more wrong. There's so much activity going on inside if you just look a little closer. Many species use hedges as essential corridors that link to otherwise isolated habitats, like this rare hazel dormouse, which is running from the small copse it was born in towards a new one, there, it will meet another unrelated dormouse and have offspring, helping the survival of the entire species. The dormouse stops off on its journey for a quick snack on some hazelnuts before it continues on. That's not the only food in a hedge though. Hedges are full of a whole variety of food sources, like nectar, berries, nuts and leaves. Watch as this elusive purple emperor butterfly comes in to feed on some remnant aphid honeydew, a waste product that aphid bugs produce when they feed on tree sap. This butterfly and its caterpillars need to watch out though. The hedge also acts as a great navigation feature for a whole variety of animals moving across the landscape, including some of the butterfly's predators. This brown long-eared bat doesn't like to cross open areas, but still needs to find food, so it will feed along hedgerows as it travels between sheltered woodlands. If the weather takes a turn for the worse, then this bat can seek temporary shelter within the hedge's many trees. As the weather calms down, out comes a male peacock butterfly to defend his part of the hedge, ensuring that any females approaching his territory will only reproduce with him. But what about the people living around the hedge? We're part of the ecosystem and we interact with this habitat too. The roots of many plants within a hedgerow helps it act as a natural flood defence, drawing up water directly and holding any excess water in the ditches on either side. This helps protect not only our homes, but also our farm crops from any damage. Hedgerows sustain keen pollinator species, as well as predators that feed on crop pests, which results in increased farm productivity. Not only that, but hedges can directly provide us with food supplies, such as blackberries, hazelnuts, slowberries, hawberries and elderflower. With all of these amazing functions that hedgerow habitat can provide to our ecosystem, it's worth exploring hedges in a little bit more depth. What actually is a hedge? Hedgerows consist of multiple components. You have the hedge itself, which is made up of many different plant species. Then there are also trees found within the hedge line, ditches either side of the hedge, and a bank of wildflowers and grasses. In fact, it's any bank, wall, ditch, herbaceous vegetation, or tree within three metres of the centre of a hedgerow that's considered to be part of that hedgerow. With over 500 plant species being recorded as supported by our hedges, it would be impossible for me to cover the full composition of a hedgerow within this video. However, there are some plant species that are more commonly found within them. The best hedgerows for wildlife contain hawthorn, blackthorn, field maple, hazel, spindle, and wayfaring trees. They also contain some larger trees, such as oak and ash. Within a hedge, there will be a variety of plants, such as bramble, dog rose, honeysuckle, and clematis. A greater mix of different flowering species, which produce flowers and berries at different times of the year, provides insects and their predators with food sources over a longer period of time. As well as a variety of plant species found within UK hedgerows, there's also a large amount of animals that you can see in them. Comment below to let me know what your most interesting encounter with an animal in a UK hedgerow has been. 
For me, it was definitely the time that a fully grown badger stepped out of the hedgerow just a few metres in front of me, stopped to stare at me for a few seconds, and then disappeared back into the hedgerow. There are 130 species identified in the UK as requiring conservation action that are significantly associated with the hedgerow habitat, so maybe you've seen one of these species. All of the identified species can be found within England, 104 of them within Wales, 83 in Scotland and 59 in Northern Ireland. Many of these species also make use of more than one part of the hedgerow, such as living up in the trees but choosing to hunt down at the base of the hedge. Out of these species that require conservation action and are associated with hedgerows, 12 of them can be used to represent the requirements that nearly all hedgerow associated species need to live within their habitat. These species are the purple ramping fumatory, orange fruited elm lichen, large moss cadabee, goat moth, brown hair streak butterfly, common lizard, bullfinch, tree sparrow, yellow hammer, soprano pipistrel, hedgehog and dormouse. Let's have a look at how different species can live and interact within different parts of the hedge. Let's start at the tree line, which is at the top level of the hedge and will already show you a great variety of wildlife. On the high branches of the oak tree, watch as a song thrush sings in the morning sun. Follow the trunk down and peek in the tree hollows where a tawny owl is sitting on its nest. Nearby, in small woodpecker holes, a variety of bat species are roosting until evening. Watch at night as the nocturnal bat swoops through the leaves of the trees to pick out insects, using the hedgerow to feed on as it heads between different roosting locations. Moving along the hedgerow to the ash and elm trees, you might spot a couple of hair streak butterflies. The brown hair streak butterflies feed on the ash tree's aphid honeydew, while the white letter hair streak butterfly lays its eggs on elm tree branches. These butterflies often venture below the tree line to the main part of the hedge. The brown hair streak caterpillars will feed on blackthorn leaves within the hedge, while the white letter hair streak adults will feed on nectar from the flowering bramble. It's not only butterflies venturing below the tree line. A range of bird species will nest within hedges depending on the height of the shrubs. At the highest level, you will find chaffinches and greenfinches nesting. Where there are lots of trees in the hedge line, there will be bullfinches nesting, while tall and wide hedges will have blue tits. Look down at a medium level hedge and you might see white throats and yellow hammers nesting, while lower down still, there may be wrens and robins. Let's venture deeper into the hedge and discover some other species that can be found out of easy sight. Perhaps you're within southern England and Wales, where you might catch a glimpse of one of our rarest small mammals, the hazel dormouse. In April, you might spot them feeding on blackthorn and hawthorn flowers. As time moves on towards summer, they will start to feed on ash keys, honeysuckle flowers and insects. Between feeding, these dormouse will weave breeding and resting nests in the dense hedge growth, using twisted and knotted bramble and honeysuckle stems. These can usually be found between 30 centimetres and 2 metres from the ground, or within low tree holes. As the weather gets colder and the hazel dormouse prepares for its winter hibernation, it will begin building fat reserves by eating blackberries and hazelnuts. As winter sets in, the hazel dormouse will nest in the base of the hedge within a small, moist depression in the ground that's covered in leaf litter. This is the only time the hazel dormouse will come down to the ground, but it's not the only species that can be found at the hedge's base. The base of a hedge should be made up of thick, herbaceous vegetation, including species such as cow parsley, hedge mustard, hedge bed straw, garlic mustard, hedge woundwort and a variety of coarse grasses. Looking closely through the grasses at the base of the hedge, you could find a grey partridge nest. These birds are a staple in hedgerow landscapes, but have sadly declined due to a reduction in insect populations and poor hedgerow management. Buried alongside their nests, deep within the grasses, there will often be dead timber. This is a source of food for all kinds of insects, and allows for old stored nutrients to be recycled. In some locations, this dead timber will even house stag beetle larvae, meaning you might be lucky enough to spot stag beetles at a hedgerow base during the summer. Suddenly, the stag beetle here gets disturbed and startles away, but it isn't a rival male doing this job, it's a passing hedgehog, using the hedgerow to forage for invertebrates. Hedgehogs rarely venture into open fields, 
and the less hedges there are, the less hedgehogs there are. They build nests in dense bramble outgrowths, both as a summertime day shelter and a wintertime hibernation site. Although hedgehogs move through hedges looking for ground invertebrates, they will also venture out slightly beyond the base of the hedge, looking for a greater variety of prey species. Ditches and banks attract a range of insects, which many more species than just hedgehogs will feed on. Depending on how moist the hedgerow borders are, you could find a range of amphibians and reptiles throughout these areas. Join the great crested newt as it follows the ditch beside a hedge, searching for a new pond. Along the way, it will encounter a variety of invertebrates roosting on plants within the ditch or assembling on the banks in swarms. Below the waterline of a ditch, the invertebrate larvae, such as bloodworms, will be feasting on the decaying vegetation and helping recycle nutrients back into the system. Travelling further down the hedge to a spot with slightly better water quality, you'll come across a range of dragonflies, water beetles and rare bugs. A great variety of birds and bats, such as this soprano pipistrelle, will roost nearby to feed on these invertebrates. But the ditch isn't the only spot that you can see the great crested newt. They will also seek shelter among the wildflowers and grasses on the banks of the hedge. Deep amongst the bluebells, greater stitchwort and anemones, a grass snake is on the hunt for a number of amphibians, such as the great crested newt, as well as other small mammals that it can feed on. On a sunny day, this grass snake will make use of more open areas on the banks to bask in the sunlight. Hedges are great for UK reptiles because of the variety of temperatures, moisture levels and vegetation densities, which provides a varied habitat that reptiles can use to warm up, cool down, find shelter and hunting. They can also move through the hedges to get between their egg laying sites, such as manure heaps, to their hunting sites, such as around ponds, and back to their hibernation sites, like a nearby woodland. Above the snake, the wide variety of flowers like hemp agrimony, ragwort and thistles creates a variety of nectar sources for our native butterflies. Small tortoiseshell and red admiral butterflies can be found on hedgerow nettles, while orange tip butterflies are on the garlic mustard. With the great variety of smaller animals and plants to feed on within a hedgerow, you might even spot a larger animal lurking around the banks of a hedge. Foxes, badgers, rabbits, hares and stoats will all be searching for food and temporary shelter along a well-managed hedgerow. Did you know about just how diverse UK habitats were before now? Please give this video a like to let me know that you want to hear more about UK habitats in the future and also check out some of my other videos here to learn more about UK wildlife.